Hey folks, this is Ard Wolf. Welcome back. We're on turn 9, representing July 1915 of our playthrough of When Eagles Fight, World War I on the East Front. So let us get started without further ado. So, bearing in mind uh, how badly I've screwed the rules up, especially regarding the Russian ammunition shortage roll for like six turns in a row, uh, I made an expanded sequence of play that actually has all the steps on it as opposed to just like the main six steps. Uh, I did put this on Board Game Geek, so check that out if you're interested or if you're planning on playing this. Uh, I may revise it and add some more stuff on here, but uh, the expanded sequence of play in particular was what I wanted. So, we're going to start with the random events phase. I've made an effort to have better lighting, but uh, the consequence of that is that there is more glare than there was before. I don't have uh, the benefit, this being Ohio, of natural light for all that long during the day. So let's roll up. We're on turn nine. So we have uh, the first column to roll on. Let's see what we get. That is a nine, which is event D. Event D is a major allied offensive on the Western Front. Decrease the game turns German replacements by half. Round remainders down, so half of three is one. Lost steps are never recovered. Uh, okay, so the Germans would ordinarily have received four replacements this turn. Looks like they only get two. This is uh, bad timing because uh, there was some uh, su pretty severe attrition last turn, so that's, uh, that is not a good thing for the Germans. So uh, let's move along to the new units and withdrawals phase. The Germans have no reinforcements this turn, nor do the Russians, nor do the Austro-Hungarians. Uh, after the event, the Germans will get two replacements, the Austrians two, and the Russians four. Uh, Oberost, however, does come into play this turn, so it, it is available. So uh, let's move up to the front line up north and see what the Germans are going to do with their two replacements. Before we get to what the Germans are doing, though, let's look at uh, Russian replacements. Um, we have uh, four replacement points and no reinforcements for the Russians. Uh, in the interest of getting as many strength points onto the table as they can, the Russians are going to spend their replacements on these uh, four fairly good but single-step cores. So let's, uh, let's place them first. Two of these guys right off the top are going to go in Minsk because they're going to be needed there. Um, one other is going to go up here in Riga, which is sort of barely on camera. Uh, and the fourth one, we don't really have another city to defend. Um, I'm going to put it up in Smolensk, which is also off camera. Uh, we will use strategic reinforcement. You know what? Let's put the two in Smolensk. Uh, we'll use strategic movement to get those... Uh, those guys down to the line. Let's uh, take a look at what the Germans are doing with their reinf uh, replacements, I should say. They don't have any reinforcements. Uh, they only have two replacements thanks to the event, so we're going to flip this core to its full strength side, and we'll take this guy over here as well and put it on its full strength side. The Austrians get two replacements. We are going to buy the only thing we pretty much can buy, which are these 343 three cores. And we're going to put these, since we have to put them in a city, it's off camera, but I'm going to put them in Budapest, uh, where I may be able to get them into the action. Or should I put them in Vienna? I think I'm going to put them in Vienna. No, I'll put them in Budapest, actually. And I think that's a, a slightly better idea, based on the Austrian analysis of the situation, which is, is dire. Uh, but the Russians are going to have to make a move. So uh, that is the New Units and Withdrawals phase. There's no mandatory withdrawals for either side, once again, uh, because there's no scheduled ones before turn 11 or 12, and we didn't get any mandatory withdrawals for events. So uh, one thing I should mention here, though, this, that's the reason I marked this, uh, this heavy artillery actually can advance after combat, but only a maximum of one hex. So I did actually move him up a little bit. So... Um, let's move to the strategic movement phase. Minsk is now on the line, so there's really not a whole lot we can do with, uh, with that unit. We can take these two guys in Smolensk, and we'll put this down in Baranovici, because they can be used down there. As far as other Russian strategic movement is concerned, I don't think there is really anything viable. Um, nothing they need... In 
any of the active areas is in a town or city and available to be railed. Uh, I guess I could pull a guy out of Lemberg and or uh, uh, Prismal or whatever it's called, um, but I don't think I don't think that's a very good idea. So uh, when we get to Russian movement, I'll uh, I'll explain what I'm going to try to do with them. In the meantime, for Central Power Strategic Movement, let's take a look at what we can do with them. Austria-Hungary's rail limit right now is four. Uh, they don't actually have four units that they can meaningfully move, uh, but they do have one core down here in Vienna, which they will rail up. Uh, you know what? Let's leave that. In view. Let's leave that up there. Uh, and it's actually in Brune anyway. Let's take these two, put them here, and then we'll take the one three four three core from Brune and move this to Unguar. So I'm pretty sure, by the way, that I screwed this stack up uh, last turn. So what I did was I actually ended up taking a bad attack uh, with strength factors that I didn't really have because my clumsy fingers flipped the whole stack over to its higher strength side. Um, so what I did was I just kind of adjusted for the result. So it was an attacker down one, loses one strength point. So I got rid of it and then flipped the, the other guy back over to the side he was supposed to be. So once again, sorry about that, but, uh, but the, you're learning along with me here, so I appreciate uh, the patience of everyone. Uh, for German strategic movement, let's uh, readjust and see what we're going to do. There's really not a huge amount that I can do with uh, German strategic movement. What I can do is move strat move this over to Swally uh, because I think Kovno here is, am I right? One, two, three, four. I guess it. I'm not right. That's not relatively safe. Um, and that's not in a town. I'd really like to pull something out of somewhere. So down here versus Austria-Hungary, I don't have anything in a uh, that I can rail over. I could take one unit out of here, however, and send it up here. And I'm inclined to do so because that's much safer down there. Um, and this is in a, about as safe as it can be on this line anyway, so I think I'm going to have to be happy with that. So that is uh, strategic movement, so let's move on to the Russian player turn. As I believe I have strongly indicated, I believe that the Russians are hosed fairly badly here, so they're going to have to pull back again and try to form something of a defensive line. So we're going to take this unit and go one, two, three. This unit will go one, two, three. This unit will go one, two, three, one, two, three. This guy will move up here for one, two. Uh, these two, let's move these guys first. One, two, three, four. That is a swamp hex. So go one, two, three, four. One, two, one, two. Uh, that's not optimal by any possible definition, uh, but, so, and I think there's not a ton we can do here. Um, these guys in the marsh are going to be, uh, this guy was right here, right? I can take this, actually, and put him here. I think I'm satisfied with that. That gives us a strong southern end of the line, at least. At least as strong as it's going to get. Uh, so we'll see where that goes. Um, there is a reasonable attack that the Russians could make right here. So let's mark that with a marker, just to uh, try to remember that we're going to, I think, at least look at it. And now let's move down to the Austrian area. Okay, so something else I screwed up uh, last turn. I meant to attack uh, this hex, but I attacked this hex instead, and then I went back and said, oh, well, it's all the same factors, so I'll just move the guys out of here. But actually, cutting this off would actually have been better. This hex would actually have cut off Russian supply to all this stuff. But because the Russians have this town of Gorlish and this town of Przbrzeh, 
these are connected to the rest of the Russian nail, rail network. So these guys are actually all in supply down here. Nevertheless, they don't stand a very good chance of staying in supply unless I make uh, some fairly serious adjustments. So let's take a look at that. So we're going to start with this guy who's going to go one, two, three, four, right there. This guy's going to go one, two, th uh, three, right there. This guy will go one, two, three, one, two, three. These guys will go one, two, three, one, two, three, four. And I think we're going to keep that there. And we're going to pull this back too, which I hate to do, but nevertheless, I think I have to. Um, so let's start here because these are the guys who are the most stuck in the mountains. So that's one, two, three. One, two, uh, let's see, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. The woods are two movement, so this will be one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. One, two, three, four. So we're definitely going with a defense in depth type of approach here. We, we have to. Uh, this guy will go one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And as long as I can stay on this rail line, I'll be okay. Um, and then this guy up here in uh, Zernowitz, um, I think he's going to stay where he is for now. This uh, is a non-optimal defensive position because we're basically in a position where we're going to get hit from both sides here, potentially anyway. Um, so that's not particularly desirable. But the good news is that we once again have an attack that we can make here. Uh, so let's take a We actually have two... Let's take a look at both of them. This is going to be 11 factors in defense. We're going to have 5, 10, 15, uh, 15, 23, 11 to 23. That's going to be a 2 to 1, 2 to 1 even up. Hmm. I'm not crazy about that. But there's no adjustments for it, so I'm going to make it, and we'll see what happens. See if I can get the uh, the glass anywhere here where it won't destroy forces. So two to one even up. We oh, we have a one that's uh, two losses for the attacker, which the Russians can scarcely afford. Um, I think we have a no, we don't. Well, we'll get rid of the three four three, and I guess we'll get rid of one of these one step units as well. And we're going to look at this one right here, this hex. That's going to be 10, 15, uh, 18 to 6. That's a 3 to 1 with a river. 3 to 1 down 1. I'm going to take that as well, probably foolishly. 3 to 1 down 1. So that's a 2 and a 3 to 1. That's actually 1 and 1. So it's a straight exchange. Uh, and this stack only has one step. It is eliminated. And the Russians will lose this unit right here. So that wasn't so bad, actually. Um, and they, we can advance after combat. The question is, do we want to? I think I think that that is okay. Um, actually, what I will do is advance that after combat. Or do I want to do that? I think, I think I'm going to stay put and just try to maintain this defensive line. Where's the railroad? It's right there. That's the weak point in the, this entire chain of misery. All right, so let's, uh, let's move up to the German front and see what we have to do up there. So looking at these German guys stuck out in the salient, there's six factors in defense. We have five here. There's another five for 10. There's another five for 15. So we have 20 to six is going to be a three to one, even up. It would be silly to have just done that against the Austrians. Uh, and it's not a German active core. So that's a 3 to 1 straight up. 
let's troll. Wow. Okay, so that's going to be two losses for the attacker. So that's... I either leave huge holes in the line or I get rid of two of these guys and hope that the minus two for the city is going to save my bacon there. And I'm pretty sure it won't. So that is the Russian player turn. They tried to mount an offensive. Uh, they tried to mount three offensives. One against the Germans failed utterly. One against the Austrians failed utterly. And the other one uh, against the uh, Germans, they uh, had a somewhat costly exchange. But uh, in principle, the Russians can afford the losses better. But looking at the, uh, you know, what's coming and the reinforcement, the replacement numbers. I mean, the Russians don't have vast numbers of troops coming in. They do have a couple of uh, reinforcements next turn, though, plus Stavka, which should help. So let's uh, let's quick eyeball this whole chain along the uh, border in Austria-Hungary is fine for supply, so that's actually okay. Um, but. Uh, and up up here against the Germans, they should be fine too. So attrition is good. Uh, let's take a look at what the Austrians are doing. All right, so we have got these two, three, four, three uh, infantry corps that the Austrians have. Um, we can move them up a bit, but we can't get them up into contact with the Russians up here. So what we are going to do, though, is we will move them one, two, three into the mountains. Which means if they get attacked, they get the mountain bonus too. And we're keeping all this stuff uh, where it's at. Uh, let's adjust the camera again so I can show you the rest of the Austrian stuff. All right, so looking at what we have here for Austria, we've got this cavalry unit, which I think I'm going to keep back here because it's not that good anyway. We'll move this up a hex. We'll move... What do we got here? 564, 564, and 674. We'll take the two 564s and move them up one. Mm, think about that. Okay, so they can get here, or they could get here. Here they have a legitimate attack. So I think what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to spread these guys out a little bit. They're in the mountains in either case. Um, that's one... Well, let's look at this. One, two. That's going to be one... Two, three, one, two, three. That's very risky on the part of the Austrians. I think we'll move these guys up one into the mountain pass. This is where we, where we have an even line as well. Um, and I don't feel like the Austrians have a reasonable attack. Here. Well, they, they, they don't have a reasonable attack here against this stack of two with 13 factors in defense versus five. So that's that's not happening. Uh, but let's take a look at what the Germans are going to do because this is going to actually be quite interesting. So here's the problem with the Russian defenses as they stand. 100% of them are predicated on hold, continuing to hold the city of Lemberg, which has four factors in it. You know what? I forgot to do Russian ammunition shortage again. So let's roll that up. All right, belated Russian ammunition shortage. This really kind of breaks the rule. We're on game turn uh, nine, so we're rolling on that column. There's no modifiers. We have another 12 pieces of ammo shortage to hand out. So looking at... This actually is supposed to happen right before the Russian combat phase. So, or at the very beginning of the Russian combat phase, after Stavka, you know, I made a cheat sheet for this and I still screwed it up. We got one there. We got one, two here. We're going to put one there because we, we deem it to be sort of safe. That's five. And we'll put this one here on the top unit. And then the Germans will have six. This is really important, too, uh, because it makes a big difference as to how the Germans are going to approach this. And then the Germans are going to actually put ammo shortage here in, what is this, uh, Rava Ruska, and here in Lemberg. And that's significant. Uh, what I was getting to when I reminded myself that uh, we have to do ammunition shortage was that this whole line of, of supply is hosed if the Germans take that hex. So obviously the Russians are going to adjust next turn, but that was pretty much all that they could do. So let's go up to the uh, Russian uh, line in the north and see where the Germans are going to place markers up there. 
So we need to do the German movements too. So we're going to put uh, put this here in Minsk. We're going to probably put that there. It's OCD away here. Um, and I think we're going to put looking at what we can do. We're going to put Let's see here. Put two of those there. There's three units in that stack. Now let's do the German movement, because this is going to be important. So let's go back down to the park uh, near Austria-Hungary, because there's stuff to do down there. Okay, so in order to break this, we need to take this hex, uh, and right now that's going to be three factors in defense and eight factors in attack. That's a two to one, so we need to boost that up. We're going to do that by taking this guy out of Brest-Litovsk and moving him up. One, two, three. Okay. We need to hit Lemberg as well. Right now this unit isn't doing much. One, two, three. One, two, three, four. We can move this entire stack over here. Is there any way to get more forces down there? One, two, three, four, five. Not particularly. Uh, I could get this cavalry unit in here, but that's only one additional factor. So what do we got? We got two. Uh, it's going to be so as is, it's going to be two down one. There's no German active core here. Um, it's going to be two down one. That's five to one, though. So, on a 5 to 1, I basically need to roll anything. I need to roll a 3 or higher. These guys were here. There's nowhere else I can realistically pull forces from. Um, well, let's, let's reset this. This guy came out of Brest-Litovsk. And he could go 1, 2, 3... So let's look at this. I could put this unit here instead of here. I could open it up to counterattack. But if I could take Lemberg anyway, I could put the entire force in there. And these guys could go one, two, three, four. Okay, so that's not really going to help. Um, but what I could do is move this one, two, three, four. And that's going to put this at 14. That's going to counteract the negatives. And then we'll move this guy up here, back where I had him before. So this looks pretty good right here. Um, can you see this? I'll adjust the camera because we got to go to that part of the line anyway. The, here's, this here's bad news for the Russians because here's what the Germans are going to do. Two movement costs for the swamp. One, two, three, four. Okay. This German unit will be out of supply. Uh, except that one, two, three, four to Brest-Litovsk, which is fine. Okay, this guy will go one, two, three. We'll also have a concentric attack on here. One, two, three. One, one, two, three. These guys will move up to oppose Minsk. This guy. We'll move out of Vilna to oppose Minsk. Uh, can I realistically... This guy will move up here to Vilna just to keep somebody there. These guys will go... One, two, uh, let's think about this very carefully. One. Two. One. Two. Let's hold off on that for now. That's two, three, two, three, two, three, and three. And we 
really have to have something there, don't we? So we'll do that. All right, so that is our German movement. Do we want to move anything else? I don't think so. I'm thinking about this. Um, yeah, I'm going to take this and move it up to, let's see what we can do. One, two, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. We'll just move it up to Vilna. Keep it a little closer to the front. And we've got this guy in uh, Svali now, so. Uh, and we're going to probably think about making a run for Riga here once we break the Russians this turn. So this looks fine. Um, one more thing. We've got this cavalry in it right here. So what I think, I'm going to first of all place this here, because we can, and this here, because we should, and this here, and that works. Uh, we've got this guy in Insterberg, actually. We're going to move him, and he's Cav. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Well, one, two... Where was this? Nowhere. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. To take Labau. Well, that's cavalry, though. That doesn't uh, actually doesn't take anything. Nevertheless, I think that's a better position for it. In fact, let's let's not do that. Let's uh, take it from Insterberg and put him here in Kovno, and put this in Insterberg because Insterberg is safer. So I'm happy with that. So let's go to uh, the Central Powers combat phase. All right, so once again, I've gone out of order. I needed to place Obras at the beginning of the uh, the Central Powers combat phase. The only real place I could put it is right here for it to have its full effect, because I can only place it in hexes that actually have a German unit in it. And that was the only one that actually faces the Russians. So we're going to make a couple different attacks here. Now, we got this stack here, right? And in this stack, we have two ammo shortage units. So that's going to be a total of 6 on the defense, 12 on the defense. In a swamp, which is technically marsh, which is minus 1. We have a German active core for plus 1, and we have concentric attack for plus 2. So we're at plus 2 versus 12. So let's see what we have here. It's not, a, not going to be an amazing odds attack. So here's going to be... We have to 15, so we have a 1 to 1 attack plus 2. Um, that is a shitty attack. Um, I tell you what, let's, uh, let's think about this instead. Um, this won't be concentric and it will still be with the swamp, but we do still have a German active core here. So that's versus 6. This is going to be pretty much the same thing, isn't it? Um, so this is going to be 11, 16 versus 6. That's still a 2 to 1, even up. That's worse, actually. So the question is, on a 1 to 1, I need to roll a 6, basically. Or I need to roll a 4. If I roll a 6, I eliminate the stack. Let's, let's do some other stuff first. Well, I, well, I think about that. So looking at this stack, we have here 11 in offense versus that goes to three, I think. You know what, let me verify that. Effects of ammo shortage round up. So this this fa this unit here has a defense of seven, so it's actually gonna be a four, okay? And then we have 11 here. We have a river, so it's... So we have 11 plus another 10 is 21, uh, 27. 27 to 4 is 6 to 1, correct? 6 to 1, um, yeah, 6 to 1, minus 1 for the river, but plus 1 for the German active core, plus 3 for the uh, heavy artillery, and plus 1, so for a total of plus 4, for the... Uh, uh, for the fact that we're 6 to 1 and not just 5 to 1. So let's see what we get. Plus 4. So that's going to be a 7. 
on a five to one. That should be a breakthrough and an elimination. It is. Okay, so ammo shortage guy is toast. And we are totally, totally going to exploit this breakthrough because it's right at the end. Um, we can move up to three hexes. So let's put this guy over here for now. We're going to go one, two, three. Can I do that? Well, yes, I can do that. I don't know if it's smart. One, two, one, two. This will stay there. And then this guy will stay here. And placement of Overost does not let me exploit that. But here's something else we could do, though. We've got right here on this stack, that's four. We have here 11, which would be three to one, up one. Three to one, up one for the German active core. Let's do Minsk first. Minsk, Minsk's defense is a three. However, it's plus two because they're in a Russian city. So looking at what we have here, we have against it, we have 16 right there, including an active core, plus the active core here. So that is a 22 to three. That is a seven to one. So it's five to one, plus two, minus two, for the city, plus one for the active core, plus three. So it's five to one up four. So, unless we, oh. six. Six on a five to one is a breakthrough and an elimination. Okay, so if we're gonna take Minsk. Now, uh, Obras doesn't change position here, that's significant. Um, so, let's see what we're doing. We'll move the active core up, we'll move one of those up, we'll move these, keep these two back here, and we can technically exploit with this as well. We can break through here is the thing. Um, so that's going to be one hex, two hex, three hexes, three hexes. We'll move this here into Minsk. It's important where we actually place that. All right, so looking down here at the end of the line, I think we said we were two to one. Let's check it again. So that's, uh, there's two half guys here. So that's six total plus six is 12. And we have 10, 15. So it's one to one down one. No, it's one to one even up, isn't it? No, it's one to one plus two, actually. So if we roll a one on a one to one, we'll actually get a three and we'll lose one. I'm going to take the attack. And let's hope for some juice on this die here. Oh, face plant! That is a attacker loses one and we're going to have to take this. All right, so that didn't go well. Let's, uh, we're, we're still not in the Oberost phase, so let's go down and see what we're doing in the area of Austria. Okay, so we have a couple of fairly nut-crushing attacks to, uh, to do here. Um, here in uh, Ravaruska, we have three factors in defense thanks to the ammo shortage. On the attack, we have 9 plus 9 is 18. That is 6 to 1, so we get a plus 1 for that. Uh, there's a river, so we're at minus 1. So 5 to 1. There's no active core. It's just 5 to 1, even up. Okay, that's a 3. Uh, on a 5 to 1, that's a 2 eliminated for the defender, so this goes away. Uh, the attacker can advance. Uh, is that a breakthrough? Nope, it's not. Nope, it's not. 
That would have been significant, actually. Um, so we'll move these guys here. Then we're going to make this attack. This is huge. This is two factors in defense. And no no river. But it's a city. Okay. So it's, it's minus one. Just from that. And we have... 12. So we have a 6 to 1, plus 1 for the odds, and minus 1 for the city. So we're again at 5 to 1. Okay, and that's a 4 on a 5 to 1. That's a 0 and an elimination. So the unit in Lemberg is eliminated. The Germans can move up, and they will. Okay, that is the German combat phase. Down here in Austria, they've done fairly well. Up uh, on the front with the Russians, they've done also fairly well, but they did have a failed offensive. Uh, so let's do Oberost and see what happens there. Okay, so this whole jazz, within two hexes of Oberost, we can make another attack. So basically, this unit, this unit, this unit, this unit, these units, and these units can make a second attack. These guys over here cannot, which is significant, but there's not much we can do about that. So we're going to, first of all, hit this stack, right? Let's do this one first. This is going to be 6, 11 versus 4. Uh, that is a 2 to 1, even up. Let's think about that. In the meantime, let's... Mm, it's 2 to 1, but it's not even up because it's concentric. So it's a 2 to 1, up 2 up another one for the German active core. So it's two to one up three. So that is that is a very good attack. Huh. Okay, so that's a nine on the two to one. That's a breakthrough and an elimination. He goes away. He's going to come up. Uh, technically, this guy's got to move back, but then he can move another uh, hex. So this guy will move breakthrough to one. This guy's going to actually break through up there as well. Now we have... So we're, we're satisfied with that. That leaves this unit completely isolated. And I'm pretty sure one, two, three, four... Actually, it's not out of supply. Let's look at that. So if I go one, two... There's no way this guy can trace supply. Because you can, it's four hexes to any town or city, and then the city has to be connected to the map edge via the rail net. Um, so that cuts this guy off. This guy's also cut off. Um, this guy, let's see about here. This is uh, six units. Six, it's going to be five, eleven. 5, 11, 16 to 6. That's a 2 to 1. However, plus 1 for German active core. Plus 3. That's a 2 to 1 up 4. I will take that. That is a 10 on a 2 to 1. That is another breakthrough and elimination. Okay. And we can pull these up. Well, no, nope, let's not do that. One, two. One, two. All of these are out of supply. The entire Russian army facing Germany is out of supply. So, good luck, Russia. Wow, that's bad news. And the uh, now we don't we don't check that until the next Russian movement phase. We got a chance to break out of this, but I am not at all sure. I see how that's even conceivably going to happen. Um, but let's let's. This is why we actually play the game. So let's. Uh, that is it for the Central Powers turn. There's no victory check attrition wise. The Central Powers are all fine. Um, since we now hold Minsk and can trace this entire thing to Minsk, uh, one, two, three, four, yep, if we have to. And plus we've got uh, Dvinsk and other cities up here, so that's not going to be much of a problem. Let's, uh, let's, uh, let's call uh, turn nine to a close, then. Uh, thanks for watching. Please uh, stay tuned. It looks like the Russians are on the ropes. 
and in turn 11 we have to do another victory check uh, and we'll see what the Germans can do. Uh, the, the back of the Russian army up north has definitively been destroyed um, and it's probably time for uh, for the Russians to uh, to start thinking about capitulating. They're going to throw the Tsar out themselves at this point, which is pretty much what happened historically. So thanks again for watching. Please uh, share this around, leave me some comments in the notes below, and like this video if you're enjoying the series, and stay tuned for the next episode. Thanks.